I do this personally, beating your meat. If you beat your meat like that. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> My name is Munya Chihuahua, satirist, writer, and quick fire content comedian. We could back up the shotty and clart a few pheasants. I enjoy many things about the GB, but racism isn't one of them. People don't like the idea of him being James Bond. Why? Because he's wow. black. The black experience in the UK varies. I've got a best friend that that is coloured. Some bits are brilliant, <laughs> and others need a serious upgrade. So I'm taking a road trip around the UK with some all-star amigos do I do? and my best bud, Scott. I grew up in Brixton. Controlled the county lines there, didn't you? To spread the brilliance of black culture. One, two, three, drill! So that maybe one day, Jolliffe and Jerk will become just as normal as Jammy Dodgers and Jaffa Cakes. Bang, bang, bang. This is Race Around Britain. Today, the aromatic Aki to my salt fish of satire is the comedian, actor, and entertainer who's amassed billions of views across the internet. Best known for his character Big Shaq, his usual catchphrase was man's not hot, but today it should have been man's not on time. I've been pretending to stare at the sea for seven hours now. Finally, he arrived. The one and only Michael Dapper. Hey, brother Mutbert. Michael Dapper. Nice to see you. Hey, to see you nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to Thanet. I mean, this is the UK tourism hotspot, bro. You know, you've got Dreamland over there, got giant weather spoons over there. And then Bahamas like beaches. What more could you want? This is the place to be. The place to be, bro. Where's the people? Looks like we're shooting an empty R&B video. OK, well, look, about that. There have been a few cultural misunderstandings, let's just say. But look, okay. I'll explain it over cod. Come on. Cod? I am sick at cod, you know. No, I meant cod and chips. Cod and chips? Bro, I need some rice and chicken about oh, cod and chips. Who's eating cod and chips? I've got bad sausage. Huh? You love a bad sausage. Nah, you love oh, a you, yeah. bad you sausage, love a bad bro. Sausage. Good afternoon, I'm Barty Kreese reporting today from South Thanet, the district that nearly elected Nigel Farage as an MP. Fortunately, Farage came second, meaning that whilst Thanet may be in Kent, it certainly isn't being ruled by one. The region boasts numerous tourist attractions, such as an amusement park, scenic beaches, and this sculpture of a man caressing some erotic beads. However, according to the local council, Thanet may not be the Barbados of Britain for much longer, thanks to the district's long-standing battle with racism. Whilst most of England scrambled to get rid of its racist statues, local MP Craig McKinley welcomed them to Thanet. According to his plans, tourists would travel far and wide to see his soggy Edward Colston. We can only hope he was referring to the statue and not his tiny racist penis. However, the statues aren't the only things with black faces in Thanet. The region also boasts a blackface Morris dancing group and famous minstrel entertainer Uncle Mac. We asked a black coffee shop owner whether she thought there was a problem with blackface in the region before realising it was Matt Lucas. And finally, Kent has also suffered incidents of food-related fascism, with one cafe being given a racist nickname and a Caribbean restaurant being sprayed with racist graffiti. The vandal and their unseasoned taste buds were clearly unable to handle the jerk, so instead, they became one. More on the story as it unfolds, but for now, one thing is clear. If Thanet doesn't address its problems with race, they'll become a serious threat to tourism in the area. Artie Kreese, RAB News. Thanet is pretty much the Barbados of Britain, so it was a shame to hear that racism was ruining its tourism prospects. Michael and I were on a mission to make things right. So we hit the road, driven by the home bargains Lewis Hamilton, Scott the chauffeur. Right, so Michael. Sorry, I don't Why do you feel so comfortable slapping my thigh? Sorry, sorry, you just got a very slappable thigh. Anyway, what? I've got your chauffeur, because yeah. I know that's how you roll these days. This is Scott. Michael. Scotty! Uh, good to you've never you. met before, because I didn't bring him to your party, unfortunately. Why didn't you bring him? Yeah, I just didn't know if it was his scene. I mean, Scott, they didn't play any Oli Merce. That's my only concern. Oh, you didn't? You kind of look like Oli Merce. I look yeah. like Oli Merce slash Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing about Thanet. Look, yeah. it's, it's a nice place to visit. Yeah. But the council is worried that because of the racist incidents that have happened here, yeah. people are going to stop visiting. Most people in Thanet actually might not be racist. Mm, you say that. I was in a Caribbean shop last night by the hotel, and someone called me a jerk. Did they call you a jerk, or did they ask if you want jerk? I mean, she said it so quick, all I was jerk, and thought, hey, don't shoot what, the Was it a Caribbean woman? Uh, it was. <laughs> a Caribbean woman in Thanet? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if they're rude, that means the food's usually good. It's the opposite of your mum, Scott. Because uh, she's lovely, but the food is... Gone. Hey, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think that the only way really to find out what's going on is to go and meet the people of Thanet. Meet up with them, see what they know about black culture, and see whether they think there's a problem with racism here. Yeah? Yeah? I'm on it, bro. All right, let's do it, let's Scott. Let's go and meet the people, bro. Hit it, brother. Take me to the people of Thanet. An MP said he'd seen very few cases of racism in Thanet, and as we know, politicians always tell the truth. But just to be sure, Michael and I hit the streets with a special instrument scientifically proven to measure racism. Now, this is the Thandos meter. OK. You ever heard of Nando's? Yes, I heard this of This is a sort of racial equivalent. OK. So, in terms of racism, where do you think Thanet lies? Is it sort of plain, no racism, or sprinkling of racism, lemon and herb? A bit of medium there, healthy amount of racism. Pretty damn racist for hot, and then extra hot, racist AF. Lemon and herb. It's a lemon and herb. Medium to lemon and herb. I'd say medium. So like yeah. a healthy amount. Oh, yeah. My ancestry is I'm a Jew. OK. So I have a, an inbuilt detector for Nazis and people like that. OK. You know, and racists, right? And it twitches a little bit okay. around here. So I'm going to give it medium. So we had our answer. If Thanet was a Nando's order, it would be a medium chicken pitta with a serving of spicy race. It was clear that the locals knew about their area, but how much did they know about black culture? What language is spoken in Nigeria? I want to say African. What is fufu? Uh, uh, to be honest with you, it's, it sounds moist. I think it's some sort of curd. I would say it's probably something from the Vietnamese or from one of the Chinese. Like a noodley thing, I was saying. What is the capital of Africa? Oh, give me the first letter. Capital of Africa? Mm -hmm. Kenya? Africa's a, a continent, it's not a country. <laughs> My man. If someone came up to you and asked you for a wine, what would you do? I don't drink wine, so I'd probably refuse. I would like to think that they would say, would you want to have a dance? Oh, yeah. you are a star. Tony. You are a star. Just a little bit of... Yeah, 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 and back, rocking from side to side kind of thing. You get a bit horny then. Well, you do. Yeah, well, you, can, you can, you can, you can get a bit horny then. See you later, Tony. See you later, Michael. Are you coming back or...? Even though Michael was arrested on suspicion of bike theft shortly after, it was clear that the people of Thanet had good intentions. However, the number of locals who actually knew about black culture were foo-foo and far between. We needed a plan of action. But first, we discussed our findings. Bruv. That was interesting. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like some people could do with going on safari, do you know what I mean? They don't have a clue about no safari. Actually, Scott, have you been on safari? I have, but I think I prefer chrome. No, he's talking about safari in real life. I got the search. We, we not, the, chrome. not the Google. Not Google chrome. <laughs> oh, sorry, boys. <laughs> sorry, now, that, now you're doing Jimmy Neutron. It's That's been, not Oli Merz, bro. It's Oli been a long day, Michael. Like it's been a long day. Come on, man. So, Michael, yeah, one thing to... that I find interesting about Britain is we've got a lot of exhibitions and museums that suggest we're embracing to other cultures. But actually, I don't know if that translates into an actual acceptance. I could go to the British Museum, yeah. I could go to Thanet's own museum and see artefacts that make me feel at home. Yeah. But then I could actually do things that I would do back home in Zimbabwe yeah. and suddenly feel out of place. Do you know what I mean? Like, have you ever had that experience? I've definitely experienced that, especially when I was younger. Mm. When I was born here, when got shipped to Ghana when I was like one years old. <laughs> <laughs> Went to live there for five years. And then I came back, I had a very thick accent, and you know, hey, my name's Michael, you know? <laughs> Get the heck, what are you laughing at, Scotty? You've never been there, bro. You're talking about flipping uh, How'd you Google know? Chrome. How do you know I haven't been there? Yeah, when I, when I came back, you know, I was, you're very, I was very loud. We were just made fun of mm. at the time. Do you know what I'm saying? Even like, when I used to speak about certain foods that we used mm. to eat at home, do you know what I'm saying? Like. I didn't grow up having uh, a, a roast on Sundays. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We would have, like, fufu and, like, light soup. Scott has that as well. Scott doesn't have nothing. Oh, his, like mum's the, his mum's the... What would you have? You have what? Fufu on toast. Fufu on... You can't have fufu on toast. Well, you, <laughs> you can in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. There's nothing you for Scott's You can't have man. cassava on toast, bro. Can you? That's a donut, bro. <laughs> That's it. I used to have fufu on toast. But you know what? I think we introduced the people of Thanet to Afro-Caribbean cuisine yeah. with our own cookery show. You know, yeah. Like a show that people live in Britain anyway and just yep. give it a bit of a twist. I've got the perfect name. The Great British Jerkoff. Ooh, that's good. You like it? That is very good. Yeah. Love the idea, Scott. Get us to a kitchen. Let's go. So this was it. The Great British Jerkoff. A room full of local amateur cooks who probably thought that Oxtail was a high street charity shop. Together, Michael and my Caribbean counterfeit chef, Johnny, had brought them here to test their knowledge of Afro-Caribbean cuisine. It was in for a penny, in for a pound. 
lifted, yeah. And time to turn up the heat. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the great British jerk-off. My name is Michael Dapper, AKA Young Ainsley. And uh, I am Johnny Oliver, uh, Jamie Oliver's cousin. You know, I got the, uh, the looks and the jukes, and he got, uh, well, he got canceled. Today, we are going to be cooking black cuisine. You got 60 minutes to Make cook anything. an African or Caribbean dish. So, on your marks. Get set, jerk. My mains. Now, I can see your sausage, John. Tell me what's going on. Um, they cook these green bananas yeah, in yeah, Africa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, now, I was thinking, of, I was actually going to bake one when I bake my sausages, see how this comes out. Well, mate, that's not the taste of Africa. We're looking or for the, the Caribbean, we're Africa. looking for the taste of Africa. Have you tried some of the shito? Um, the first part of what you said was what it tasted like. I did actually try a little of this, and God, it was disgusting. Are I you... thought it was black pepper. John, what I will say is, if we can't get you to experiment with the ingredients, perhaps we can get you to experiment with some of the techniques. Show me how you'd stir these usually. Right, and that is exactly the problem. You secure the bowl and just begin to really involve the whole body. You need to become the spoon. Let's have a look. So, pull up to the bumper. That is great stuff. Carry on as you are. Integrate the techniques we've taught you. And if you can, surprise us, do. Wow. What's that, a cheese toasty? Got a pan fried in butter yam, some chicken marinated, which we're going to fry off. We're going to top it with a puree. When you're making jerk, you do want the meat to be quite tender. Can I give you a tip? I do this personally, beating your meat, OK? So, grab a piece of that. Beat your meat. And just pop it on the chopping board, beat and you're just going to run your knuckles, just pound it, that's it, beat it. You see how it's almost falling apart? I think you've learned something new from this. Yeah, no. Good stuff. Something I pick up something. Don't beat your meat, bruv. All right, me generals, 30 minutes left. There we go, Guy. That smells delicious, So mate. it's just uh, you by yourself today. We're used to seeing five guys, usually. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what's going on here, because it smells absolutely incredible. It smells delicious, okay. mate. So, I've got, obviously got a bit of lamb in here. Yeah. Um, got the chocho, -cho, okra and onion at the moment. You put okra in it? Yeah. Touch me, great. Right. Touch me, bro. Okra. Oh, for Winfrey. She's, yeah. she's uh, <laughs> one hell of a presenter. Anyway, look, Guy, you're yes. doing amazing. Yeah. We'll be back with you in a couple yeah. of minutes. Don't worry. If you need anything, just say Ains. Just say Ains. I'm here. Just Ains. Call me. I'm here. Rebecca. Jodie and Rebecca. Talk us through what we see in front of us right now. Right, so we've got some chicken in mm. some sort of a coconut sauce. Rebecca, just, yeah. ins just interject. Where's the chicken, please? It's in there. Where? It's hidden. And then I've got some sort of plantation. Is that the plantation? And... It's, it's, it's pl plantain. Oh, sorry. The plantation is farm and stuff here. Oh, right, <laughs> OK. The rice, talk to me about right. the rice. The rice is literally just rice at the moment. I'm looking for some advice with that, actually. Rice and peas. And peas with, yes. Really? Definitely add some peas, yes. and then we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Okay? OK? Peas and love. All right, thank Come you. Come on, Michael. Peas. Rebecca's plantation was simmering away nicely, and the rest of our Rasta chefs weren't doing too badly either. So we left them to it and wind our way outside to welcome our very special celebrity judge. Notting Hill Carnival, often termed as Shotting Hill Carnival, because of the sheer amount of hard drugs being guzzled up by the gangs in attendance. Each year, Carney causes carnage in the local area, and when bashment meets beef, you can expect to see daggering of a very different kind. It's the biggest street party in Europe, but is it the most dangerous? The answer is... No, you silly saltfish. <laughs> Notting Hill Carnival has an almost identical arrest rate to Glastonbury. You might think it's a scary street party filled with spicy patties and jiggling batties, but it's much more than that. It's a celebration of black culture. Still. We know some of you may need to build up the courage before giving it a go, which is why we're introducing our brand new virtual reality game, Winal Fantasy. Simply slip on the headset and enjoy Carney from the comfort of your couch. Enjoy a little soaker on your sofa by selecting a rhythm from our jukebox. You can dive in at the deep end with dancehall legends like Beanie Man and Bounty Killer, or try our British Bashment selection, featuring artists like Mick Dagger, Little Mix and Irie Styles. If you're going to truly conquer Carney, you'll need to look for collectibles, just like a normal video game. Power up with plantain and collect rice and XPs to level up your character and unlock fancy new gear. Whoa! I, 
think I'm ready for my first wine. Oh, ho, ho. slow down there, my general. First, make sure you've mastered the basics. Start off with a simple two-step tutorial and wind your way up to Caribbean combos before taking on the world boss, Vibes Cartel. <laughs> Whoa, that's a high score. <laughs> you see, there's nothing to worry about. Carnival is just like a video game. You enjoy it for a few hours and then move on with your life with no lasting damage. Start your journey today and download Vinyl Fantasy. Your first carny, it's just around the Kiana. It was almost time to judge the jerk off, but before we did, Michael and I popped out to Arasta to grab some ingredients. Whilst on our way, we stumbled onto the topic of black history and just how little everyday people seem to know about it. I think what's clear is, in Britain, yeah. there are lots of things that suggest we know all about black culture, yeah. but it might not necessarily equate to an actual knowledge of black culture. Yeah, a lot of people, especially when we were growing up, didn't have knowledge. People used to refer to Africa as just one place. Yeah. So if you're from, if you're from Ghana, mm -hmm. Nigeria, Uganda, Togo, Eritrea, wherever you're from, mm -hmm. you say, oh, yeah, he's African. You're African, isn't he? When I came from Zimbabwe, yeah. one of the first questions I got asked was, do you wear a loincloth and do you have a toothbrush? Do and do you have a pet lion? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think people are being mad ignorant. We have a lot of things that represent culture yes. here, mm -hmm. but whether or not people have actually been and visited these places, mm. do you get what I'm saying? You know, I guess you can't really blame people because black history, it's just not known. It's not taught. You know, when I was in school, the only reason I knew anything about black history is because in Zimbabwe, one of the things they taught us is the scramble for Africa. You know, European nations coming in, taking all the good bits, and then just going. Without yeah. that, I wouldn't have had a clue. Black history is something that I think well, I studied a lot independently. You know, my parents being first generations Africans mm. migrating here, they made me understand, number one, their struggle, mm -hmm. number two, who I am, mm -hmm. where I come from, mm -hmm. what my people have been through. It's something that I feel personally I had to learn about. It also makes me appreciate now mm. so much more yeah do you get what i'm saying 100 like... i hear what you're saying man i think what you said about britain having things that would suggest it's so rich in culture but not the everyday person having an understanding yeah, of that yeah, culture yeah. that is so true 100%. and actually we can test that let's set up our own black exhibition mm -hmm. fill it with pictures of fake historical black figures yeah why and not see, see if anyone notices are we going to make them black and white the pictures black and white or color i mean it doesn't matter if they're black and white to quote another michael <laughs> Thanks to its local museums, Thanet had loads of black artefacts, which hopefully meant the people knew loads about black history. To test this, Michael and I set up the Black Exhibition, a portrait gallery that had more black faces than an episode of Little Britain. All of them were making history, but none of them were from it. Would we be able to waffle the local senseless, or would we be caught in 4MLK? It was time to find out. Do you know much about black history? Certain amount. So this is a collection of, you know, in some ways overlooked black British historical figures. This man here, ring any bells? No, I'm afraid not. He is actually really good friends with a prince. Oh. Yeah. You know, you've got ounces, pounds, kilograms, grams. Yeah. He was the, uh, the man, or the physicist rather, to coin the term tons. Yes. And guess what his surname was? Carl Tun. Look at that. This is a uh, Megan dos Stal Ayon. We've had people come in here and ask, was she a model? She's so glamorous, mm. and so well made up. Like mm. a almost sort of meddling in uh, Marilyn Monroe almost. Certainly, she's got the eyes and That's the pout. Right. She is actually a, uh, a horse rider. Yes, she was actually the first um, black British um, horse rider to actually win anything. Any idea who they are? No. They're well dressed. You see two black gentlemen in an outfit like this, and you think to yourself, you know, where's the do rag? You know, where's this sort of low swinging jeans? Curtis Canan. Right. And Kyle Kiel. They were the first black performers at the Royal Variety Show. Oh, fantastic. They were magicians, so they would do a lot of tricks. They used to turn water into orange soda. Wow. I actually feel quite humbled, actually. Uh, that I, I don't know all, the, all, all these stories. What about this fella here? I want to say athlete. First impression, I would have even gone criminal. Right. Um, 
I'm afraid. Mm. Zicky won still. That name ring any bells? No, but it's a great name. It's a fantastic name. He was actually responsible for devising the shot for malaria. Oh, if you think that malaria is probably the biggest killer mm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. You'd think he was, but actually, he's, he's, the he's, the, saved... he's stopping the killing. Yeah. Steve, mm -hmm. I've got potentially the most interesting thing to tell you now. Good. I'm not a curator, I'm just a, a comedian. The people I've said they are are not actually the people that I said they are. These guys are actually modern day celebrities. Those two gentlemen there are actually uh, TV stars. She's actually uh, a rap artist. He played a man called Carlton, but he was Will Smith's friend in a show called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. She's actually a rapper. <laughs> when it comes to black history, there's sort of no impetus on anyone to kind of learn about it and to dig into who were the most important people. Hmm. These are actual black historical figures. I don't believe you. Okay, well, now you can believe it. You've got Samuel Coleridge Taylor. He was the first black conductor of the Rochester Cathedral Choir. And then you've got Samuel Crowther. The first black bishop in this country. And then over here, you've got Sarah Forbes Bonetta, who was a Nigerian princess who eventually became very good friends with Queen Victoria. My lack of knowledge in yeah. education is absolutely mm. there to see, because I didn't question any of that. But you know, this is why it's important to actually learn about black history. Perhaps it speaks to the deficit of there actually not being much black history taught in schools, in surrounding areas. I would agree with that. And I really appreciate the fact that you guys have come out and, you know, you're actually intrigued and you want to learn more. Very much appreciated. Thank oh, you. Oh, excellent. Thank you. you. Next time you watch Fresh Prince, yeah. you'll be like, there's a guy who invented tons. Yeah. <laughs> that blew my mind. That's insane. The fact that you could not know Keenan and Cal, bro. Keenan and Cal. Who loves orange soda? Cal loves orange soda. Is it true? Mm -hmm. I, I do, I do, I do. I do. Ooh. Ooh. Black history and black culture is incredible. 100%. The fashion, the traditions, even the food. Mm -hmm. Something like food you'd expect. Look, everyone loves food. Yeah. And I know everyone would love Afro-Caribbean cuisine. You have to understand, the cuisine is lit. Mm-hmm. The food is litty, litty, litty. You've got places like Thanet where, you know, people have tried to introduce black food and it hasn't gone so well. I just think, like, a lot of people, especially when we was growing up, didn't have knowledge of mm. Africa at all. You know, like, our mums used to cook, like, thick palm nut soup mm. and stews and stuff like that. Mm. And you leave your clothes lying around mm -hmm. in the kitchen, and then you come put your clothes on, and you go outside, and you go and hug a girl and say, eh, you smell like Africa. You have to go outside raw, mm. and you have to rely on oxygen <laughs> to come just blow through your clothes, bro. Bro, there was no Tom Ford to come save you then, bro. I say, Dad, Dad please, can I have some Tom Ford? Bro. Who is Tom, and why is he driving a Ford? <laughs> bro. We were back in the jerk-off kitchen, and with our contestants so close to the finishing wine, it was time for final touches. The challenge itself had been a shock, but there was still room for one big nasty surprise. Five, four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Stop cooking, everyone. Hands down. Right, now, we think you've done a fantastic job, but the judgment doesn't lie with us. He's a man that huffs, and he puffs the one and only. Big nasty! <laughs> I understand. Pass the Dutch here quickly, isn't it? Good oh, to meet you, Miyagi. Yeah. Good one. Give, give you the double high so strike. Well, well, man. Nasty. We have prepared in front of you a selection of African Caribbean cuisine. Rebecca, would you please bring your dish forwards? Here you go. Wow, look at that. I've got rice and peas there um, with a lime on top, mm -hmm. and then I've got plantain with chicken and onions in a jerk sauce. Incredible. Oh! It's got a bad cough. <laughs> You've got the right idea with the sauce. It's just so strong. Yeah. It's really hot. Are you all right? <laughs> you know, one thing I must give you, mm. the fact that you've changed from saying plantation to plantain. Thank you. That one is... thing I've learned today. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, now she's saying pl the plantation. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, good job, Rebecca. Al, would you please bring your dish forwards? Man like Al. Look, no, see if you drink Spanish water from the tap, when you get the orange shits, that's what's key that it looks like, cuz. Would have loved it to be just a touch softer. The plantain looks good. Let's have a little go at that. 
Yeah, let me try some of it. Nearly. It needed to cook it a bit longer. The plant ain't that bad. So, all in all, not terrible. Right, Guy, please bring up your plate, Mirasta. It's rice and peas using gungo peas. Lamb with chocho, okra, onions and shitu. Shitu. Um, pan fried plantain and some breadfruit. <laughs> some breadfruit. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm not just a show. <laughs> Is that not how you say it? Choke, yeah. take it easy. <laughs> hey, brother, don't choke. I think this is the best plantain that I've tasted on this show. Good job, guy. Last but not least, John. Welcome to my Afro-Caribbean take on English crispy bangers and mash. That's a Tory food, bruv. That plate that says Margaret Thatcher, bruv. What are you talking about? That's as like, hard as brick. Yo, man run for the rhythm and flex. Your bangers and mash is there. Your bangers and mash is there. Bang. Like a professional, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. So, the victor in the first ever Great British Jerk Off is. Guy. Man like oh, Guy. Well done, Guy. Man like Guy. I told you, you're the guy. How do you feel? Elated. I knew it was going to happen, though. When I see sausage and mash coming out, I thought, nah, I've got this. Man, you <laughs> rubbed you out, John. You got rubbed out, John. <laughs> Right, so guys, the competition's over now. How did you find it? Be honest. Educational. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> In Thanet and some of the surrounding regions, there have been a couple of black restaurants that have actually been sort of vandalised. And a lot of the time, I think it's probably from a lack of understanding or appreciation of that culture. Hopefully you came away with something, and fingers crossed, if you keep going, you might be the ones to open the first Thanet Afro-Caribbean restaurant. I think it's John. Oh, John is! <laughs> Four perfect strangers had entered the kitchen with no knowledge of Afro-Caribbean cuisine and left with skills that could get them a job in any good Turtle Bay restaurant. Our mission was done, and it was time for Michael and I to depart. Oh, man, that was a great trip. Yeah, what do you think? Nice, man. We've set up an exhibition yep. and taught some guy to make jerk mash. I mean, if that's not a reason to visit then I don't know what is. I don't know, I could stay here forever, you know, just sitting by the sea. Wind blowing through my hair. It's nice, man. Scotty! <laughs> guess it's home time now, man. It is home time, yes. I'll right, jump in, actually. Let's get this crack a lacking uh, Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Me and Scott are going the opposite direction, so if you... Tell you what, if you get a boat and head that way, I think you pretty much hit Croydon straight away. So that's... That's, that's something. We'll see right. you all soon, though, yeah? yeah? See you, Michael. Oh, what a nice guy. What a day. Here we go. Good stuff, Michael. <laughs> He's got to be joking, isn't he? Moonbird! Can you hear it? Moonbird. Moonbird. Hi, Moonbird! 